Hi again. So, <laughs> hi again. <laughs> I just actually recorded one minute a video and then I didn't like it. So <laughs> now it becomes hi again. <laughs> okay, so now hi again. Um, I'm gonna hear and um, I wanna talk about uh, the poor and medium because um, recently I have been um, using bear I'm gonna go into the details and a friend of mine um, asked me a question today morning um, and showed me a piece and I thought I want to just go over it quickly so um, so basically I always make um, you know I'm still experimenting by the way with with this as well adding subtracting up until i reach um you know i think i like this kind of consistency especially for uh pigments for metallics for uh liquid um uh, you know uh, not liquid but uh, flow we call them fluid fluid um acrylics um yeah you name it you know metallics i said um so basically whatever that need need needs thickening not tubes uh, i love this uh consistency and i since i used it i didn't need to thicken my mix for um a pouring made for a um all what i said whether it's um, golden, whether it's uh, deco art, metallics, whether it's uh, sometimes I use a boom mix, sometimes I use it on its own, and like I said, pigments. Um, what else? Also, I will show now today. Prism pour. This is the new one. Uh, that is just uh, released and you can see it on the website and I'm gonna mix one uh, today so basically this is an advantage and another advantage that I realized with this uh, enamel is uh, that it gives an additional glance it gives a shine to whatever you are mixing so in addition to the glance that you get from uh, metallic or uh, pigment, you get an additional glance with this one. And if you have a tube and you manage to make it thinner by playing with the ratios, uh, you get also that shine into uh, your tube mix, which is not, it, I didn't get that with other poor medium that I used before. And I mean, I had used uh, uh, vivid fully pour uh, as a in my pour medium as a pour medium and I have used um, vivid enamel uh, with um, what is it called now what is this called with um, a varnish as a pouring medium and I have used um, Watco with, what is that? I thought I, I have them all. Watco with uh, also um, tri triple thick and uh, a mini wax um, as a pouring medium. And uh, sometimes I also use Josonia as a, in addition, in, uh, in addition or in place of mini wax. It's, you know, so I always play with ratios. I, according to the need, I play with what's mix, you know, uh, makes it easier for me. So, so basically I have been totally dependent on what go triple thick from um, Home Depot and Menuax. Uh, and in addition, uh, gloss varnish. Uh, so, and I just added burr 
um, to the table uh, just, yeah, some time ago, just, you know, a while ago. So basically, I want to start with dispersants, how many dispersants we have. Uh, so, so that, for example, uh, for any other pigment than primary uh, elements, you need a dispersant. And I went over that in another video. Quickly, I will go over uh, the four dispersants that I have with me here now. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so golden retarder could be a dispersant if you have it for a pigment. Um, you can use with other pigments also or with primary. I mean, primary elements is something unique that I want to talk about soon. Uh, Jasonia varnish is another and uh, you can use instead of Jasonia varnish or with it um, also mini wax uh, and always keep an amount uh, from bear and mini wax and also everything uh, in my trolley so that I can quickly adjust you know what I the, the thickness of my pore medium or uh, yeah that way it's very 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 attainable as well a gak 800 by golden is not only for uh, preparing your wooden surface uh, but also it can work as a dispersant as well so and the fifth one and the main one that i'm gonna deal with today is uh just you basically for primary elements uh, for color from color art uh, you can basically just uh, mix it or disperse it with uh, your pore medium the reason being is these uh, pigments are um, to start with they are dry paints and not makeup powder, powders so with that, you can actually mix it with your uh, pouring medium uh, without having disperse it with your pouring medium and not necessarily using a dispersant uh, uh, to start with. So here we go. Today, I just mixed actually uh, an amount of uh, pouring medium, but I mean, I wanted just to show you the thickness with it being so fresh um now if let's say i mixed my pigment and it needs a bit of thickening then i add and it's always advised to add golden soft gel or or golden regular gel this is a gift from my friend mandy hi mandy and um and then the other thing is uh, you have also uh, Liquitex gel, soft gel, and uh, I used that for a while also before my golden uh, shipment came. So now let's go ahead with, uh, I'm going to just uh, show you how much we need of that um, gel. Um, and I have here ready-made uh, just a small amount of uh, my poor medium. Just just basically um, half a teaspoon of your poor medium, a bit more depending on uh, if you're gonna use an eighth of a spoon, teaspoon uh, of your pigment or uh, a quarter. I myself nowadays use a quarter. So let's now, uh, and I, by the way, I usually now use my um, aspirator or um, what do you call it now? There is a name for it. Not the aspirator, but my mask. You know what I mean? When you do a resin. Now I also uh, wear it when um dispersing my uh, pigments once i disperse the pigment then i can take it off and do the extra mixing but for now for today 
uh, I'm just gonna, you know, you're not gonna hear me otherwise. So what I do nowadays is I do, like I said, uh, half. This pigment is marmalade from the new set, a summer sequence. And it's a beautiful uh, pigment. So, and then, you know, once I do that, I just go ahead and with this industrial napkins, I clean uh, this because, you know, for the next pigment to be used. I'm going to use it for the next pigment. <laughs> so basically then, okay. So this is, uh, like I said, marmalade. And basically I try to um, mix it. I like to mix that, mix it with this uh, small, uh, stick. Uh, basically, I like it because it goes in every corner. And what you need to do is you need actually to move your pouring medium and your pigment. And okay, I will make the word disperse easier by saying that what I try to do here is I try to mix all the granules with the, with the poor medium. So basically then the granules, I don't have that sandy feel, say, and, um, or also if I see a like a collection of uh, powder somewhere, I'll just uh, try to, what it let's say you know that's why this person this person this person is a better word than wetting because you're actually trying to disperse the pigment um you know uh in, a, in the and whatever dispersing this person you're using here is our poor medium. So now I know that I've done well. I touched all the uh, bottom. I touched the, uh, you know, the walls of this container. This container is a two ounce container, but I usually don't fill it up. And look at this color, but now you're gonna see it when I mix it with, um, uh, my pouring medium and let's not use the pouring medium from yesterday because I want to use the one that I just mixed now and I'm going to tell you the ratio and see if it needs more oh you know what actually I forget that I am um, that I am showing actually how so I usually just do it with uh, my second. Okay. So usually, usually I put two tablespoons or one and a half, depending, you know. A two tablespoon is good. Now I think I put um, almost one tablespoon spoon in total with the with what I used before. But let's see now. Uh, I wanna come with a, but this is really full tablespoons. So let's see now if it's okay. So this is now, uh, you know, uh, a certain amount that I might add or subtract for whatever that is needed. Um, and by the way, usually when I mix my uh, pigments, I usually mix them with an 
I mean, yesterday, a day before I work on them, I think that way it's, uh, they get to, uh, somehow they, I think they get to mix very nicely with, you know, I don't know. I think it's like a stew, I always say. A stew is always nicer next day. <laughs> Yeah, and I love stew, so, so yeah, it's, um, then you're actually, your mixture is, um, is ready to be used, you know, if in case there is, there is a couple of, uh, unmixed, you know, couple of powders, <laughs> granules or something, during that night, they will just go ahead and, okay, so I, well, how can I show you now? With this, with this uh, stick, I can't show you the, the thickness. So, yeah, uh -huh. so let's see, let's get a, uh, a nice um, I used all my shovels and the new ones I have them somewhere um, I'm organizing actually my here I have them here I'm organizing my uh, studio so this table is actually now it's full of things so I just want to show you with a shovel. You get these shovels with these. So look at this. I mean, I like this for a for a pigment. I mean, when I when I try this, and remembering what I'm used to before, I think it's maybe too much. But look at how it flows. This is, I think, what a honey warm honey flows like, right? So. So we're done with this um, now. It's it's advisable to just add a little bit of of um, soft gel I use. I mean, um, or regular gel and just just a tiny bit like a a, a b size you know and this now would be ready to pour with uh, but like i said i like to come next day and uh before i also go and you know coming on, on the, uh, before the camera, mostly. Uh, I like also to check them again and see what uh, what needs to be done. Needs thickening, needs to be thinned. But I mean, this is very, is cheaper than a gallon of, um, of uh, soft gel by Golden. So, I mean, it's a cheaper way of getting your pigments thickened. So, for example, last, when was it last night, this one. Sorry guys, if it's take longer time, but this is, uh, this is the basis, right? I mean, uh, and I'm gonna also include my other four mediums. Uh, because then you have also, uh, you have a chance. And I must say, I mean, I can keep, look at this. Look at this. This is, uh, let me just get, get the name now. Uh, okay, that is Chambord. I'm going to show you the color. I mean, Chambord is named after the alcoholic elixir with a nice bottle. So look at that. Now, 
next day it's already thinner see so i mean that's why i want always i want especially with pigments want to wait for next day now we come to this these lovely small uh, third generation meta, uh, prism pour called uh, beach uh, bouquet and this color is called pink diamond so this is actually the third metamorpho metamorpho or forces uh, that this prism pour went into so third generation so basically if if you have this let's say um you know um sitting on the shelf uh, or standing on the shelf like that then by gravity all the mica powder in this liquid form goes to the bottom and i tried to do it this way i tried with the other ones the second generation of prism pour to do it also this way but then I get also the the thick part of full of makeup powder, this part. So what my advice is, no matter how you have them standing or lying, you have to, just before you come and um, mix with your pouring medium, you just go ahead and shake it very well. And I go also and hit the bottom. <laughs> Maybe I get some, get my anger on, on this bottom of, <laughs> so anyways, this is, um, so this is what we're going to mix now. I think I hit it enough and I shook, shook it enough. So, okay. So this one, I, you don't need actually to, uh, you know, to disperse, uh, it's liquid form. So what I do is. I just um, put my pouring medium. I fill an ounce here. I actually ordered an ounce of these and I was sent mostly two ounces, which was more expensive and also not the ones I wanted, but anyhow. So um, I'm just gonna mix this a bit and then I'm going to add a little bit and then a little bit. I have to be add three uh, squeezes. You call them that? I don't know. Squeezes. And then I go and mix them. And mixing this is easier than, of course, uh, uh, you know, powder form. I, that's why also I, I kind of like them so much. Uh, they're easy and you can use them in, the, in their own or you can mix them with your warm medium. But look at this color now. Let's say, say that I want, okay, let me just take this. No, I want to still mix it. I want a little bit darker. I'm going to just make four squeezes. And let's see, I mean, I'm taking an example for you guys. You might want to do just two squeezes and use it as a, a light color, uh, you know, beside um, another that is dark. And, and also my pouring medium has wet coat, which is pink. So, when I mix colors, I don't get that same uh, degree as uh, of, um, you know, uh, the natural, if I use only white uh, material, you know, but the white coat is, you know, probably know, but it dries with the color of the pigment, you know? So, and so far, I mean, I like it. It's, uh, 
became my my uh, I'm not upset, you know, a main a main entity in my uh, poor medium. Up until uh, comes another discovery. Okay, so I like that my this is you know nice, nice and clean. And I will show you now. I think it's actually a little bit uh, thick somehow. So if it's thick. No, it's not. It's not actually thick. Because it's liquid, it feels even thinner than the the one that I mix. And remember again, I leave it for the night. Um, last night I mixed uh, shampoo and I mixed um, this also purplicious. And... Um, I will show you now this one and I will show you why I like to mix them a night before I mean you know but I just you know um, I check if there is maybe a lump or something from my pouring medium and then I mix it again and I try to touch the walls so yeah I mean before you make it to the camera, you've already went through a lot of mixing and it's not uh, easy easy, right? But look at this now, it's uh, beautiful. So what what is the ratio that I use today for this poor medium? I tried two bear to one wet cow and one, and today I used uh, Josonia, even though the, the smell, somehow some of us get Josonia with a, mm, not a nice smell. I always keep uh, Minwax triple thick, and I have used Minwax triple thick for a year and no other varnish, uh, because we, we couldn't find also any other varnish at, at one stage. Um, so I used two bear today, uh, to one wet cow and one varnish, whatever the varnish is. And then it depends, like I said, on how, when you come to paint, you can check, uh, your mix and decide if you need, uh, to thicken it or thin it. Again, just a little bit, a little bit beside, um, uh, you know, <clears throat> sorry about that, um, golden, uh, soft gloss. Um, so I'm told that it's, uh, it helps, uh, you know. I have used without and I have used with. So this time I decided I'm gonna put some uh, in each, uh, you know. It's just a piece, of, I don't, a piece size of soft gel or regular gel. I use soft gel, it's easier. And it's uh, easy to mix. I don't expect clogs, but again, Everything that I say now is what I believe now and is able or is could be changed or um, yeah, I mean, could be changed by experience, you know, I'm still uh, working on this and I'm still uh, trying to get the right percentage. So far, so good. The last... Uh, the last, I actually made three swipes and one um, bloom with this, uh, what I'm using now. So, not bad, not bad. Sometimes I say also, I said in the last uh, videos, I used three 
for pigment spray bare to one wet cow to one varnish but when i came today and i tried that i realized that i can't go with this if i used the three to one to one so that is my final conclusion okay my friend and all of you my friends hopefully you benefit from all of this 30 minutes but it's uh has a lot of topics here we talked about dispersants uh, types a, a few types of uh, poor mediums and also the last one that i'm using now and also what to use to thicken so basically it's more than actually one few topics for more than one video in one video okay guys bye for now hope you enjoy your paintings and you find this beneficial bye for now